Hey there, it's me Eden. Welcome to Cross-Dressing Adventure Stories. Today I'm going to share with you, Cross-Dressing Adventure Story called, Sister Made Me Bridesmaid Part 1. So, if you're new to the channel, then please consider subscribing and be a part of our inclusive community. My real name is Alan, but to my family and close friends, I've always been called a Ollie, an abbreviated version, an acquired childish name that never left me. Sis, as I refer to her, is my older sister Shirley. I have just completed high school, while Sis has been out of school for the past three years and, after two years of business school, is working in a local hospital doing clerical work in the business office. Now that she's gainfully employed and living on her own, her apartment has provided me with a good place to a crash when I need a respite from the parents. I sometimes even sleep on her hide-a-bed when I wish to stay overnight, which has become rather common. She otherwise lives alone so she enjoys my company, and we are very close friends. Kinda rare for siblings, especially those of opposite gender, but we've always had a close relationship. It was a Friday afternoon, on one of my usual weekend visits, that sis, having just gotten off the telephone, confronted me with an unusual request. Request, or was it a command? You want me to do what? I asked. I had to hear this again. This was incredible. You heard me, I said I want you to fill in as a bridesmaid at Dee's wedding. I began to shake my head, no. Me? A bridesmaid, this was completely out of context, I mean where did she get such an idea? Posing as a girl, unless. Oh come on, little brother, I know you've been sneaking in my underwear drawer for years. Now I fess up, you've been trying on my clothes, right? I assume you must enjoy wearing girls' things. I've never said anything to anybody to embarrass you, but now, I'm calling in a favor for my silence. I was speechless. As you know, Dolores is getting married and now, she needs a replacement bridesmaid. Her cousin Bonnie, who was supposed to be in the bridal party, was in a car accident recently and can't make it to the wedding, so D is one girl short. She's my best friend and I want to help her, so I sorta of volunteered you to fill in. You'll be with me since I'm one also. But why me, is all I could manage to get out. I was stunned, shocked, embarrassed. She knew. I felt like a deer caught in the headlights of a car full of poachers. Frozen in place, doomed. But how could she? I had always been so careful. Oh my gosh, how embarrassing. Why you? Cause you're about the right size, short and stocky, same as Bonnie, that's why I thought of you for this, and frankly, I really do think you'd make a passable young lady what with your petite, hairless body and smooth skin, and furthermore, I think you might actually want to be one, sis snickered. She had to get that last remark in. I've often envisioned how you'd look as a grown woman, goodness knows, by now you've had enough practice. Remember how we used to play dress up? You loved it. Sure, the right size. At 5 feet 3 inches tall and 130 pounds, so I am a little a vertically challenged for a guy, but fine, if maybe a bit chubby, for a girl. I've always been teased about my size and figure, and have been called many demeaning names such as pear shape, coke bottle, etc. Painful slurs for a small, overweight boy. Okay, so I am shaped more like a girl, slender limbs, narrow shoulders, broad hips and butt. But gee, is it that bad? Even my voice isn't very manly. I would sound rather sultry as a girl. Yes, I have tried on her clothes and admittedly, I do appear very nice in them, perhaps too much so. Even my legs are shapely in the hose. And I do have breasts, well, as much as any flabby, 
pubescent boy would have, and maybe even a little more. They do fill Sis's brassieres nicely, much to my pleasure. She is small-breasted and wears padded bras. As she talked, I sensed I was crimson red from blushing. That last comment stung. Want to be one? Oh, yeah, I was trapped between the proverbial rock and a hard place. Had she discovered my clandestine cross-dressing? When? How? And I thought I had always been so careful, so crafty. Aren't all closet cross-dressers like thieves in the night? Of course, I would dearly love to be a bridesmaid, what cross-dresser wouldn't? It's the stuff dreams are made of. Being fully attired in a delightfully feminine gown with all the accessories, makeup, styled hair, looking like a princess. But I'd die if anyone I knew learned I was doing it. For that matter, I'd also die if anyone knew what I had been secretly doing all these years. You're mistaken, I never did that. Denial, my last bastion of defense. What did she really know? Was she testing me? Oh sure, deny it, little brother, I set traps for you, and I know what you've been doing. I've got proof, new stockings with runs, dresses with ripped seams. Zippers jammed, you've left things unbuttoned where I purposefully kept them buttoned in a certain way. Things not properly folded in their original position. I've even placed transparent scotch tape on my closet door and my underwear drawers, and you've unknowingly broken the tape. Didn't see it, huh? I don't think mother was into my things. Oh yes, I know what you've been up to, I've suspected you for years, actually it was kinda interesting to think of you dressed as a girl. So, what's it going to be? How could I refuse her now without retribution, yet how could I accept and still save face? And Sis was dead serious about this. We have always had a close relationship as brother and sister, even though she's three years older. And yes, I've always envied her for being a girl. Now, I'm trapped. Funny, she's never said anything before about my a special interest. Had she told anyone else? Would she tell? She was always one to trick me into doing her bidding one way or another. This was the supreme trap. My silence was getting her frustrated. Well, what's it going to take for you to do it? I could blackmail you, you know. I'm committed to D to help her so I won't take a no for an answer. Aww. Sis. Come on, I'd be too ashamed to even attempt it. What if someone recognized me, even if I could pass as a girl? Besides, why me? Doesn't she have other girlfriends? Look, the wedding is only two weeks away. No one's available on such short notice, certainly no one the right size for the dress, especially, and major alterations or a new dress is out of the question. These things take time. I think you'd be perfect for it, and the closest one to Bonnie's size, unfortunately, you're the wrong gender, but it's a minor detail that can be dealt with. Right now, only Dee knows of my idea. No one else involved in the wedding knows you personally, as far as I know. It's mostly all her relatives and friends from her work, people we haven't met. You can stay here with me till after the wedding, so I can transform you into a presentable young lady. You've got the time. You graduated high school only last week, you don't have a job yet, so it's perfect. And, frankly, I think you've got the inclination. Sure, and I don't have any spending money either, I need a job. I know that, but you won't need money. We'll cover your living expenses and whatever it takes to transform you. It's a big favor D and I are asking, and, after all, I've kept your secret all these years. I think you owe me something. So, now will you do it? Gee, now she's almost begging me to dress like a girl. 
That's a switch. After all those years of sneaking to cross-dress. Hiding, always hiding. I suppose I could make the sacrifice of doing something I've fantasized doing for years. But I needed to offer some token resistance to save face. Couldn't she just go with one bridesmaid less? I was stretching. Not an option, family politics, the groomsmen are all selected and fitted with their tuxes. Who would they dump? Do you realize the hard feelings that would create? Further discussion was futile. She had good arguments. Actually, all the better for me. Oh well, okay, so what do I have to do? I said, sounding condescending while my heart was pounding with excitement. Good, let's start now. I'll tell mom and dad you're staying here with me for a while, ostensibly while you job hunt. Meanwhile, I want you to begin your cross-training. Cross-training? Well, yeah, learning to look and act like a lady. This is more than just sneaking around in my undies behind closed doors or in an empty house. You've got to become a reasonably convincing young lady in a very short time. So, that means, you're going to live as one full time for the next two weeks. Ha! <laughs> I'll bet you'll hate that. You'll also have to get fitted for the bridesmaid's dress. It'll likely have to be altered for you, but only slightly, I'm sure. Maybe the shoes will have to be reformed also. Luckily, you're a little guy, so maybe not. There's also a groom's dinner to attend as well as the wedding itself and the reception. You must be completely convincing, or else. Start by taking a nice, soaking, hot bath, now, and shave any superfluous hair you have where a girl shouldn't have, sis said, winking. She was serious. This was both a dream and a nightmare coming true for me, to cross-dress full-time, even for a little while but in full view of everyone? Attending dinners? Close encounters with strangers and maybe friends? As a woman? Yes, I've envied sis being a girl ever since I can remember. All her pretty clothes, nice toys, and all the attention she seemed to get from people when she was dressed nicely. More than I ever got, or so it appeared through the eyes of a child. I felt she always got the best of everything. And all the extra privileges she got. Of course, now, I realize it was because she was older, but at the time, I thought it was cause she was a girl. When very young, we commonly played together with her dolls, doll houses, and all its miniature furniture, I loved those miniatures, as well as many other girls' toys, because they were more fun than my toys. Yes, even the dolls, but as I got older, I was limited access to a girl things in favor of more traditionally male-orientated toys, cars, airplanes, sport games, things I actually had little interest in. I found them mostly boring. Oh yes, we played the usual address up the games with sis using me for her model or maid, and I always submitted. We would have pretend tea parties, using her tiny tea sets, all very formal. And we'd be two proper ladies. She was always the hostess and I was always the guest. It evolved into more advanced dress-up affairs at which I never resisted wearing mom's dresses, shoes, and makeup. At the time, mom thought it was cute that we played so well together. That was like an endorsement for us. As I entered puberty, I found myself attracted to magazine ads and catalog pictures of lingerie and women's clothing in general. I wasn't looking at the models, but rather their attire. I admired their styles and wondered how they'd look and feel on me. I sincerely wanted to try. Being attracted to sis's clothes, I first briefly tried some on and ultimately wore articles of Sis's underclothes for prolonged intervals, secretly, of course, at every opportunity, pretending I was a girl, enjoying the appearance and savoring the silky comfort of feminine things. 
It seemed to be around the time she started developing and began wearing a bra and other pretty undies. Boys' things are so drab by comparison. Plain cotton garments while sisses were pretty satin and nylon. Once I had tried hers, I was hooked. I don't know why, but I grew to really love the sensation of femme things against my skin. The tight-fitting, silky panties caressing my organ and creating tremendous erections, the look and caress of a bra, forming my ample flab into girlish-looking breasts denoting a female figure. I was so proud of them. Then, the whole package contained a form-fitting, lace-trimmed slip. And the nylon stockings, shaping my legs. All of which were the source of many fantasies. Those garments had an overall effect on my body and seemed to mold me into a girl, both physically and mentally, which I loved. And now, I was being given the opportunity to fully and openly present myself as a woman, a radical change from my past clandestine experiences. A dream came true. It was, at the same time, scary and exciting. But, how, I wondered, did she know I roamed an empty house in her clothes? Did she plant a camera? That's all for now. See you in the next video, till then take care. Oh yes, please like and subscribe to my channel. And also share your feedback, it really means a lot to me.